Today is your lucky day. The champ uploaded a new video and you found it. I'm joking. It's your lucky day because Islamnet is establishing a mega masjid and da'wah center and you have a unique opportunity to be part of that. So click the link below and donate now. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you guys doing? I'm here in the center that you guys have funded. Yes, <laughs> you guys have funded it, mashallah, the Islamnet. Center. I'm here with Sheikh Zishan. How are you doing, Sheikh Zishan? Assalamualaikum. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. I want to introduce you to the people because, Allah, I was very, very impressed with this man. I met him. <laughs> Mashallah. He spent ten years in the combination in both Egypt and Medina. He's done his BA there and in, in Sharia, and yeah. he's also completed an MA uh, in uh, Usul Al Fiqh. In fact, he was. Uh, Studying uh, Safiud Din al Hindi, wasn't it? In yeah, my thesis, my Risala was about Safiud Din al Hindi. His book, Nihat Usul Fidirat Usul. Fantastic. And now he's doing his PhD on Usul al Fiqh as well. And what I found really interesting is that when I was having niqash and discussion with this particular Sheikh, he was, first of all, so brilliant in terms of, I'm not just doing this to you know, sorry, <laughs> over praising everybody, but uh, in terms of using something called Maktaba Shamila, which is this uh, research tool. And a, a mas'ala came up, which we're going to speak about today, um, which is the mas'ala of hitting in the face. Now, this is usually the thing that is used. Mm. If you look at fatwas, for example, on boxing and on MMA, which has become a very, it's one of the most oft asked questions I get, which is a fiqhi question, of course. Uh, and I usually say, you know, there's fatwas out there, but I can't do a start of fatwa. That's not really my remit that I get asked about MMA and boxing and these kinds of things. And the whole thing hinges on one hadith. And there's different ways of it, of course. But the hadith is, is another way, right? So it's, this hadith is effectively saying, if one of you engages in fighting with his brother, then let him um, avoid the face or let him not hit the face because Allah has created Adam on his image and most scholars say on Adam's image. Now, this mm. is the hadith. This is in Bukhari and other collections as well. And if you see any of the fatwas relating to MMA or boxing or kickboxing or Muay Thai or any of the they striking sports, the they kind of all rely on this hadith. Yeah, yeah. So we did a bit of research. I mean, let's be honest. You did a bit of research. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, no, no, no. Let us be honest. You made me do a bit of research. <laughs> and then you came to me said, time please. after time. Like, I think, I, yeah, you've been there for a few days yeah. now. You, you've been, you come to me like 10 times. Yes. Did, you, did, you, did you check did you it out? Did you, find, did, you find, did you find anything? Did you find any more quotes? <laughs> but we did find quotes, so didn't we? Yes, because I'm the thing is, the box standard no. idea is this, is that there is ijma. That's what I've seen on Islam QA and Islam, I don't mm. know, um, web and these kind of things. There is ijma that darb al or hitting the face, itlaqan, is haram. In any situation, Muslim, no Muslim, ned, but there's no ned, but there's no karaha, it's ijma. But would you say that's an, uh, an accurate assessment of the scholarly tradition? First of all, Bismillah, um, I started researching this masala actually before you came, I was, while I was in Medina. Really? Because I started doing, I wanted to do some martial arts myself. I was yes. getting, subhanAllah, by being there, I was feeling like my health is declining and stuff yeah. like that, being there, just eating the fast and all this. And so, yeah. I started, yeah. so I started doing some stuff myself, alhamdulillah. Um, so I was interested in finding this thing out because I knew about the hadith. Let's walk a little bit. Hukum. Let's walk and talk, come. I Let's knew about the hukum come. mentioned in all the, uh, yeah. the contemporary fatawa they find for you find online, you find on the internet. Yes. So I took this hadith, I started researching this hadith. Yeah. I went through many, many explanations and shuruhat of this hadith. Yeah. More than 100, maybe even 200. Allah wow, Allah. wow. To see what the classical scholars actually mention. Yeah. And if it is actually the case that, that there is an ijma, meaning an ijma. agreement. Yeah, what agreement, is ijma? Agreement of Consensus. Muslim scholars. Consensus, everybody. Yeah. Exactly. About this hadith. Or if there might be room to interpret this in certain specific contexts, so if there are some exceptions on this and that. Because so if, what I did, yeah. yeah. Because I was gonna say, like, I mean, you, you'll see heavyweights. There's no doubt about it. People like uh, and Nawawi, people like in Hajj Al people like exactly. Al Baydawi and others. They they do believe that mm -hmm. hitting in the face is haram. They do believe as well, yeah. uh, Al Qurtubi and others. They they do actually take this to mean in all cases, in all times. But what did you find which was contrary? Yeah, so to that? you definitely have that opinion, and this is what is crucial. Yes. When we as academics, and that's what we are, we're Muslim academics, yes. we need to approach uh, these kind of masail mm. first and foremost in an academic manner. Sure. Meaning, this is not about tarjih, meaning about preferring one opinion over the other, or declaring one opinion to be strong or correct or wrong or any, anything we're like that. We're not this. trying to do we're any of that. We're just analyzing, yeah. right? 
I mean, we need to be honest and approach let it hang. The, the let all the opinions hang and then let the scholars decide in which situation exactly, this should exactly. be applicable and whatever. Yeah. MashaAllah, you're still here. Just make sure that you donate by clicking the link below because the rewards are unimaginable. Go ahead. So what you do find is that some of the scholars, yeah. uh, like Aslan Arani, for example, sure. he did mention that this hadith is in the context of Strike yani this hadith of Iqatala Ahadukum Khaljamin. Yeah, or the other rewi the rewi from Sahih Muslim that said mm. that says Ida Qatala Ahaku Ahadukum Akahu Faliaj Tanibal Waj. That this is applicable if you are fighting a non-Muslim. Uh, meaning no no sorry, sorry, absolutely. A Muslim. Yeah, a Muslim. Meaning mm. it does not apply if you're fighting a Muslim. Mm. Uh, a non-Muslim. Non-Muslim. Mm -hmm. Subhanallah I'm flipping up the no, words back and forth. Because <laughs> he's saying what well, Ahahu here, brother. Is brother in faith. He's not saying brother in humanity. Yeah, and that's the other opinion. Yes. So the other scholars, they did say, this is referring to brother in humanity. Yes. But that's not the only opinion, mm -hmm. right? So this other opinion, Asan Arni and, others, and some other scholars as well, is that this means brother in faith. Yes. Meaning, if you're finding someone who's not a brother in faith, yes. then it does not apply. Okay, right? can we actually bring those opinions out? Because someone's going to say, you have misunderstood what Asanani says. If you go and look at, you know, this particular call of Asanani, he's talking clearly, Asanani can brother, he's talking clearly, he's, he's getting excited because you see the tramp. That's something else. <laughs> <laughs> that's no problem. That's a very natural reaction. Let's walk a little bit, maybe he, yeah. The it's, tramp uh, <laughs> is going to... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> but I was going to say that, he's going to say, look, he's talking about in the, in the context of war, for example. He's not yeah, talking so, about so, it, not in the so, so I did yeah. look, so a lot of these quotes yes. are in the context of war, that's true. Yeah. But at the same time, I didn't find any other scholars, yeah. maybe like one or two, and even that was unclear, yeah. of which you could understand that this is restricted to the context of warfare. So let's, let's so, read it. So you had yeah. many, so when the scholars talked about this hadith, yeah. they talked about context yes. such as warfare, definitely, sure. such as uh, punishments like hudud, even yeah, those yeah, kinds yeah. of contexts, yeah. and ta'deeb as well, yes. and other kinds of contexts. Ta'deeb is what? Is, is disciplining. Yeah, and we're not Gov promoting we're not that, anything no. like that. Yeah, yeah sure, yeah, sure. Disciplining yeah. people like... <laughs> In fact, the opposite. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So, for example, Asan Na'ani, he mentions, وَهَذَا النَّحْيُ عَامٌ لِكُلِّ دَرْبٍ وَلَطْمٍ مِنْ تَأْدِيبٍ وَغَيْرِهِ He mentioned the hadith, mm. if one of you are fighting, uh, then uh, basically abstain from healing the face, right? Mm. So he's saying that this, he mentions examples. But he says, Amongst that يُشْعَرُ أَنَّهُ لِمُسْلِمُ or something like that. What does he say? يُشْعَرُ أَنَّهُ When he says, أَخَاهُ يُشْعَرُ أَنَّهُ Muslim, it's, 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 it seems like he's talking about Muslims when he says, Is that Dharabak Hadukum Ahahu? Yeah, my Yashur Ruan, who is a cot, like Kafir and Fala, I lay here at the Kilo. That's what we're referring to. Yes, first, first. So, what you're saying, if it's yeah. for a Kafir, it doesn't apply. Yeah, right? he says that. He says that. So, the counter argument someone could possibly make he's talking about is war. that this is about warfare, yeah. specifically. Sure. But in his other books, so this was from Al Tabir. Yeah, sure. But he's from his other book, yeah. Subul al Salam. Yeah. He does mention that this. He mentions the hadith, yeah, okay? Yeah. And then he mentions وَلَوْ فِي حَدِّ مِنْ الْحُدُودِ الشَّرْعِيَّةِ وَلَوْ فِي الْجِهَادِ So he mentioned these examples. Yeah. And then he mentions also the هَذَا النَّحْوَ هَذَا النَّحْوَ عَامُ لِكُلِّ دَرْبٍ As he mentioned. Yeah. This arm is general yeah, yeah. to every kind of hearing. وَلَتْ مِنْ مِنْ تَعْدِيبٍ وَغَيْرِهِ Even if it's تَعْدِيب or غَيْرِهِ of jihad or of fighting, warfare, anything. So the same, so the same, the same generalities and the same exceptionalities would apply. apply. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay, so that, so, okay well someone's going to say, that was with all due respect, the Sunani is not a madhabi, yes? Let's just look yeah, 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 he's not. Yeah. He doesn't represent a madhab, but he's, uh, he's a wild card in the scholarly tradition. Why, why don't you bring us someone from the madhab? Have you got anyone from the madhab? Yeah, you have scholars from the madhab as well. Yes. Asana, you can say, yeah, he was like that, like yeah. kind of special in that kind of a sense, you being Yemeni sure. and uh, this and that, right? Fine. So, uh, for example, mm. you have Al-Qurani, Al-Qurani in front of me. He's a Hanafi, right? Yeah, Hanafi scholar, sure. Hanafi scholar. So he was basically criticizing this idea because you know some of the scholars in the face, which is quite quite interesting. Yeah. They did say that this prohibition of striking mm. in the face, they said that this applies even in warfare. Okay. Yes. Which yes. is uh, a kind of difficult to understand. Because Allah says in the Quran, Fadribu Fawkal Anachi Wadribu Mikun Kulabanan. Exactly. Above the head. Above the neck, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they said this. Yes. Because Allah created Adam in his image and this and so this is general applying to absolutely uh -huh. everything. Uh -huh. So this is one understanding. Yeah. So according to Al Quran, he said, well, a galatun This is a huge mistake. Uh -huh. He does not agree with this uh, yes. opinion at all. Yeah. And then he has played some statements. Because that would mean that you can't you can't hit the guys, you can't hit in, in military warfare, you can't hit his face. 
Yeah. That's what that opinion would suggest. Yeah, yeah that's, what, that's exactly yeah, what yeah. that opinion is. Yeah. That even in warfare, you cannot hit the face. Yeah. Pause the video for a second. You thought I'd forget about you. When you're finished with the video, make sure you click the link below and put a donation for the masjid. And then he comes with the eye up that the day that these people will be basically dragged, dragged on, the on, the fire, yeah. on, the, on the faces. Mm. So he's saying that, mm. uh, meaning non-Muslims in this specific case, people who die and non-Muslims and stuff. Mm. So he's saying, وَأَيُّ حُرْمَةٍ لِوَجْهِ الْكَافِرِ mm. And then he said, وَقَدْ قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى فِي حَقِّ الْكَافِرِ And he quotes كذا this, وكذا. this so, so basically, basically he's saying, yeah, yeah. So this means what kind of sanctity is it is it for this? So, yeah. so his opinion, yes. and again, we are just analyzing opinions, yeah. not taking any sides, not, side, doing, not anything, making, yeah. doing any tajin, nothing like yeah, this. Yeah. We're just studying classical Islamic literature. That's yeah. what we're, we're talking about. Is, we're this, is this guy living now or was he hundreds of years ago? Yeah, hundreds of years ago. Hundreds, hundreds of years ago. ago. He died in 893, Hijri, in fact. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, so, so it's a very classical. Time. Okay. Yeah. Not that classical. Okay, sure. Yeah, I mean, All right. It's like 1440. Yeah, 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 fine, fine. So you have more classical people than him. Yeah, of course, of course. But the point is, if he's using this kind of an argument, yes, that is, that means he's making a general case. Yes, he he's making a general case that he's saying that this being applicable, yeah, uh, in the context of warfare is wrong, and then he's using this ayah as well to say that there is no hurma mm. for the wajh of someone who does not believe. Face. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Is the it face Al no. He's he's an obscure figure. Someone will argue. Yeah. Have you got any heavy, heavy, any of the heavyweights? Any Same of the heavyweights, some of them uh, mentioned, for example, mm. that this Amr that you have, yeah. it's not an Amr of Wujud. Amr means command, imperative. Yeah, command, exactly, yeah. imperative, command. Mm. So you have Awamir, and this, this is a part of Usul al Fiqh, right? When you have an Amr, Al Amr li Wujub, li Nadb, or uh, different kinds of things, yeah. right? Or even Ibaha. So, yeah, even Ibaha exists. Mm -hmm. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says. Fayda halaltum fastadu, yani in the Quran. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Amr ba'd al Nahi, or whatever. No, no, no. no. Yeah. You have this thing. Or either uh, the thing of Ziyarat al Qubur, Matthew. Yes. Fazuruha. Fazuruha, yeah. I kuntu nahi to command Ziyarat al Qubur, Fazuruha. I used to do it. So, mm. so you have this kind of context. Yeah, sure. So some of them. They did mention that this, uh, the Amr in this is not for wujub. So it's not it's obligatory. For it's for, it's, yeah, it's, it's a, a recommendation. It's a, it's, a, it's a recommendation. So if someone does it, if and someone does fair, hit the face, yeah. then according to this view, he's not committing, he's not committing a sin. He's not committing a sin, yeah. So but who, still, who, but who, still it's, it's recommended to stay away from Of course, that. so who, is yeah. that? who says that? Ibn al-Milk, for example, he mentioned that. He That's has a major a, scholar of the Hanafi Madhab, isn't he? Yeah, he's a scholar of the Hanafi Madhab. I'm going to have to milk that one. <laughs> Sorry, milk, man. Man. <laughs> I'm looking for this guy. Yeah, milk is the only shower. But yeah, but he he doesn't say it's his opinion. Yes, he's but he he is portraying because he's, it's like the only opinion he's mentioning. But he, he's still saying well, qila al amr and al qila yeah, usually is it's daif, it's, it's weak, it's not really the because some Hanafis will listen to say it's not the mufta bihi. It's not the mufta bihi. Yeah, it's true. You need you need to be honest. You need to be academic. Of course, yes. it's not. This is yeah. not the Muftabi. This is not the Mu'tamid yeah. of the Madhab. It's not, it's not, it's not. In no. fact, this opinion, mm. it is a minority opinion because the vast majority yes. of scholars yes. who talked about this, yes. they did mention that this Amr yes. is in fact uh, for wujub. Sure, sure, sure. And sure. they had long discussions like Al Qadi Iyad, for example, he had discussions about this. Yes, and never we yeah, yeah. yeah. they, yeah. they did have discussions it's about true. this. And the reason they had a discussion about this yeah. is because of this khilaf, because of this different opinion. That like you mm. had scholars who said that it is for. I thought I saw something from Al Mullah Ali Qari, bro. Have you got that? Because that's a big figure in the Hanafi Madhab and he's written lots of shuluhat on the hadith and including this hadith, I think. So that, what, what's his position on this matter? Uh, again, his position is not quite clear because he says something very similar. Okay. He quotes the hadith, قَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَهِ صَلَى اللَهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ صَلَى Meaning if you're fighting with others, if you're hitting others and... فَلْيَلْتَقِيَ الْوَجْءِ or فَلْيَجْتَنِي بِالْوَجْءِ Yeah, and then he says afterwards, mm. let me just find a quote again. Mm -hmm. I flipped the phone, so you know what happened. Oh, oh so, God. Oh, God. You know this <laughs> yeah, yeah. function. Mm. Basically, he says, yeah, so he says the same thing. He says, uh, yeah. He says the same thing. Yeah. Oh, there you have it. So, uh, well, he's giving ta'leel, though. He's giving reasoning here, isn't he? Yeah, he's giving a reason. Yes. Yeah, so. Because uh, the obvious matter, and he's talking about, in this example he's giving, yeah. uh, in, in the context of warfare, yeah. he said that Amr is going to be, I'm sorry, is that it is uh, that he's going to fight not uh, another Muslim, but yeah. he's going to fight a non Muslim. Sure, sure. And then what's also interesting is that a lot of these scholars who talked about this, some of them, they also mentioned the incident in the time of the Prophet. Yes. That it was another Muslim who was hitting another Muslim, mm -hmm. and it was in this context that this Amr was. So, 
That's why we need to understand that this hadith yes. or all these examples yes. uh, about this hadith is not just about, uh, just about the context of warfare. It's also about generally speaking. Let's bring in just one more scholar just to make it uh, something else because you say these are all fringe opinions. Why bring them together? But when you get one more opinion just to, to seal the deal here, what are we talking about? Have you got any other names? Um, you have uh, Abdul Haq Dihlawi as well. He not, was also, not Shawli Allah. The, no, no, another one, another one. Yeah. But he's still a bit massive figure, uh, Abdul Haq, a Hanafi figure, isn't he? Yeah, from the later Hanafi. Yes. Later Hanafi. Yes. Yeah. So he's saying, قيل al- قيل it's, been, it's been said that this Amr is for Nadr, right? That is, this is a recommendation. Yes. And then he also mentioned this thing that I just talked about. Yeah. جاء أن أحد كان يض- كان يضرب أخاه على وجهه yes. فنهاه رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عن ذلك. Hold on for a second. You still want those incredible rewards, right? So make sure you click the link below and you donate for the Mega Masjid project. Subhanallah. So mm. he mentioned this that in the time of the Prophet, it was yes. a person, a Muslim who was hitting mm. another believer. Uh, believer and and yeah. you know what's interesting, bro? It's like you were mentioning before we started this um this episode, you mentioned something which is actually quite well, powerful. There's another opinion also. Should we do that first? What is the or opinion? Yes. The, the other opinion. So, so this is a third opinion. It's very yeah. similar to the other one, though. Mm-hmm. And this is from another scholar called Atur Bishti. Atur Bishti. Um, yeah, yeah, it's difficult to pronounce the name. Yeah. He's saying, So he's saying that it's, it's basically the opposite of the Al-Amru li nad but if you do it, it's, it's not makruh. haram, it's makru. he's saying. Yeah, it's and makruh. he's a Hanafi as well. This yeah, he's a Hanafi. So, a lot, so you have a chunk of Hanafis saying things like this. Yeah, now, once have, again, I know the Hanafis are going to say this, not the Mufti Abihi, and we've asked the Mufti, and he's going to say, you know, that the Ma'atamir of the Ma'atamir and so but in a sense, that's another discussion. I'm yeah. not and you have, necessarily And you have doing, Hanafis, yeah. and I respect the Hanafis a lot, even though I'm not Hanafi myself. Yeah, I right? really do. I really respect uh, them, yeah. I do respect the Hanafis. Yes. But personally, though, I don't agree with this concept that's obligatory to follow the Muftabihi or the Al-Qul Al-Mu'tabid of a Madhab. I don't and that's more of an Asuli yeah. discussion yeah. that yeah, maybe will say, open yeah. up another yeah. kind of... Well, but you what? have both opinions. Yes. They both exist. I respect both opinions. Yes. But personally, I don't think that is the... Yeah. So the thing is, um, going back to the issue of brotherhood on this idea of being a khahu, um, the, the, the word akhahu here, it's seen in other hadiths. Okay, now obviously someone could say, وَإِلَىٰ ثَمُودْ أَخَاهُمْ كَذَا وَكَذَا أَخَاهُمْ That yeah. in the Quran. But that's more very, very contextual. Their brothers Salih, their brothers mm. Hud, their brothers whatever. And their brothers, uh, such and such prophets mentioned Surah Al-Hud, for, Surah Al-Hud, for example. But that's, you can see the context is very spe- specific. Their brothers, their country brother. Yeah, and they're yeah. living in within the... But Akhaka or Akhahu in the third person when the, or second person when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is doing it, it doesn't usually come in the... Yeah, and it, as, a, as a non-Muslim. Yeah, yeah brotherhood in the Yeah, it's, it's like talking that. about brotherhood in Islam. So, for example, yeah. I'll give you one example. Dhikrika akhaka lima yakrahu. The bog standard definition that the Prophet ﷺ gave mm. of what is ghiba, what is backbiting. He said, Dhikrika akhaka lima yakrahu. Mentioning about your brother, what he doesn't like. So, most scholars say that, I mean, and this is a controversial thing to say, but backbiting where you actually get major sins, mm. doesn't apply with Fusaq and it doesn't apply with Kufar. It doesn't. That's what the, the, the majority of scholars say. Even right? al- even no, yeah, Muslims. Yeah. So if it doesn't apply with uh, Fasiqs, Muslims <laughs> who are known to do certain things, it doesn't apply with disbelievers. That's mm. what, or non-Muslims. Yeah. So the, the, the hukum of backbiting, you could say you've got some similar phraseology here with the brother in this hadith and the brother in this hadith. So you can see where they're coming from. I mean, it's not, it's not, yani yeah. That's the whole thing. You can see implausible. You can see like uh, even the the zahir. You can say generally speaking. Yes. Even though, as I mentioned, this is a khilaf. Yeah. Has called, they said this is this is brother. It applies to the brotherhood regarding yani, meaning uh, from Adam alayhi salam, the brotherhood of humanity. That yes. This is what this is talking about. So you can't argue in this way as well. You can't. Right? And generally speaking, it's true. Like uh, if you t- take the Zahir, yes. how do if you look at the nusus, the textual, the textual evidence yes. of the Sharia, when you when you have the word uh, brother, uh, your brother yeah. mentioned there, yeah. or akhahu or, yeah. akha, or anything like that, and it's this, unqualified. Yeah, yeah, it is unqualified. But usually, it does refer to the Muslim uh, brother, or yeah, the Muslim, Muslim sister. Yeah, generally isn't speaking, it? that is uh, what is the case. Yes, it's true. So yeah. I mean, it makes perfect sense. What I was going to say about this is that look, we're not making a fatwa, therefore, because the, the conclusion someone can bring is well therefore this is uh, that means so you're, gonna, the, you're gonna do the thing now eh? <laughs> <laughs> no, the conclusion someone can bring is that therefore memory is halal, halal yeah, or, even, or, even, boxing, or even boxing okay. going okay. 
going into boxing matches or kickboxing, Muay Thai, everything. Is and and <laughs> frankly, what to be clear, you're not making a fatwa here on any of that stuff. You're yeah. not making tatbiq on that. You're not saying, because uh, let me tell you how it works. I mean, as I'm sure you know, right? No, but, tell me. Things. No, no, no. But uh, frankly, there's gradations of it. So someone can do, uh, for example, sparring in a club. And that exactly. sparring in a club, it's, you're not trying to hurt the other person. You're, you you can do te- we call technical sparring. Yeah, and you, act- you will end up hitting the face. You with hit the gloves. F- no, no, you hit the face with the gloves, and yeah. you can get him back, and it's whatever. But you're not trying to knock him out. You're not. Exactly, that, that will exactly. be seen as bad manners in the club. Yeah. If, you're, if you're doing and that, according to some of the fatawa, this would be haram. Yeah. If you take a literal, literalist reading and implementation of this hadith, this, yeah. would, be, this would be haram. Level because up. Because you can double the face. You've got the hard sparring. Level up. You've got like you know inter club fights or whatever. You the level up. Mm. You've got pr- uh, amateur fights, and then you have uh, professional fights. Now, if we all of these things, they're all separate fatwas for separate people in separate circumstances. Some people, bro, they're coming off the streets and they've got a high dopamine energy, yeah? Mm. And let's say they've been told to go and do, and I do believe that freestyle wrestling is probably the best one anyway, right? And it doesn't require <laughs> any hitting in the face. It's like if you know how to really freestyle wrestling is whatever, but they want to feel a little bit of passion. They want to feel a little bit of fear, whatever. Those people get them off the streets, for example, and into a boxing ring or get get them into a a kickboxing ring. It may be the lesser of two evils for some people, Mm. but that would require fatwa to be passed on that person. He's coming out of the life of crime and gangsters and you tell him you have to do this and that. Mm. It might be difficult for him. People are suffering from addictions. So these are outlets, at least we should know as the Muslim community, that there are other opinions on this very hadith. Now the muftis, it's their job now to do the implementation on specific circumstances. Everyone knows their situation best. They go to a mufti, they say this and that. Calm down, calm down, calm down. It's just a break. I'm reminding you that when you are finished watching the video, that you click the link below and donate now. But at least the ulama and the students of knowledge and the muftis should be aware of these akhwal so that they can start applying the tools of usul if and when necessary and possible. Do you think this is a fair enough assessment? Yeah, I, I completely agree with, with uh, everything you mentioned. Right? Yes. So the, right. the thing is, this evidence in of itself is a dalil there, yeah. right? But because you have the classical scholars that did differ in how to apply it back then. Mm. So that means that today, if you want to look at all these different kinds of martial arts that have which involve striking in the face and this and that, um, it is true that a lot of them, they did use this hadith, right? They based it upon this hadith. But the thing is, um, this hadith is understood by the classical scholars mm. in different ways. For example, does it apply to the, to the non-Muslims we talked about? Is the uh, command of, of an obligation or is it just like a recommendation? So because of this, we're not saying that MMA, for example, if you go into UFC, that's halal. We're not saying that. We're not going to give such a fatwa like this. Mm. Because there might be other reasons, other factors, <laughs> other things that might, like, for example, the issue of the aura, right? Yeah, yeah. You have problems like this. You have other kinds of issues. Yeah, like yeah. Both. Ring girls, so, this and that, alcohol. Yeah, all these yeah. different things. Like, you cannot give a fatwa about this, like, yes. to make something like this is completely halal. But, yeah. but what I'm trying to say is yes. that yes. this specific dalil, yes. and then to say to use this Which dalil, is, frankly, the only hadith, dalil, like... Uh, as yeah. a nas that's used. Yeah, as a nas, that's yeah. what you see. This yeah. is a, oh, you have some similar things yeah. also, but this is the main thing. This yeah. is the thing, right? Yeah. To say that this in of itself is enough to make all sorts of striking in the face as haram and to the extent that this is qat'i, to the extent that this is ijma, to, to the extent that this, this is agreed upon and this clear cut, this is something I don't think is the case at all. I don't think they, this applies. Fantastic. Because you have the classical scholars yes. who opened up some room for ijtihad about these specific mm. matters here. I so that's what we need to think. So I yeah. think you, basically my, what I believe is covered, you need right. to assess each martial arts, even the aspect of striking in the face. It needs to be assessed yani, according to uh, the, the, the rules of, of that specific martial arts, to which extent if they're going like how brutal, how bru- bru- like yani, for example, how harsh going for example, to go. bare luck on boxing. That might yeah. be uh, like, come on, like, you know, these guys have nothing. You break your wrist on the guys comes out. Messed yeah, up because the at the end of the day, they also have the aspect of dharma. Darab, right? Yeah. Of harm. Yeah. La yes. Yes. Because yeah. you can see every time someone does something like that, they're losing a massive part of their health anyway. Yeah, exactly. And exactly. we have to think about CTE exactly. and all this brain damage and all that stuff, which is new technology, which actually is, is there as well. But then that's what I'm saying. We have, we're just opening the door on this issue because it's every situation is, is different. And um, mm. it's thank you so much for this. I think it's been very, very <laughs> pleasurable. Honestly, I think a lot of people, it's the first time 
someone of knowledge, I think, has actually spoken about this in this way in the Western world or even in the Arabic speaking world, because it just, I don't think anyone has had the motivation or maybe the courage to, to mention this uh, difference of opinion. But I'm here with Zishan and Sheikh Zishan here works with Islamnet. He's an unbelievable researcher, fantastic. He, because he's able to go like a wizard on this Maktab uh, al and he's actually taught me how to use it to some extent, although there's some lessons to be learned, which is a fantastic database, probably the biggest one, would you say now, the Muslim world where you can look at all the scholarly opinions. Oh, there's about 10,000 books on there, I think, uh, in general. And we've, we looked at all the books and stuff like that. We were able to bring you this kind of information today. And that's why we always need, as a backbone of our work, people like researchers like Sheikh Zishan. <laughs> and of course, you know what I'm going to do now, isn't it? I'm going to tell you that you're not just investing in bricks and water. You're investing in people and power. When you work, when you invest in the Islamic Dawah, uh, an Islamic Dawah, of course, but the Islamnet project. You've got the link below. When you click that link, you're going to be helping expand this masjid. There's other messages that we're getting, awqaf, uh, properties and stuff like that, which then fund this organization. There's the Muslim civil rights uh, arm of this organization, which has been doing the best work here in Scandinavia. We have the Islamic research. We have the Dawah. It's the best bang for your buck. You have to click the link below and donate now. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.